This is seen now talking about structured Frobenius for vibrations defined from a generic point. Uh, great, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks also for the opportunity to, for inviting me to give this talk. Um, so I'm going to report uh, based on a joint work with Emily Riel that we've been doing the past year. Uh, and the work essentially, uh, uh, it's about uh, yeah, the Frobenius theorem in homotopy type theory. Um, uh, it's a piece of uh, categorical semantics of homotopy type theory where we want essentially uh, constructively to provide uh, semantics of uh, dependent uh, product types. Um, so, yeah, the Frobenius condition is essentially a property of weak factorization systems, which requires uh, pullback along maps in the right class uh, to preserve maps in the left class. Um, if uh, we are in, we ad have additional set, set up of locally Cartesian closed category uh, uh, with this, uh, where our weak factorization system is based on, then it turns out uh, Frobenius condition is equivalent to the dual statement that the maps in the right class are closed on the push forward along uh, maps in the right class. And furthermore, um, in a full model category, um, Frobenius condition is uh, equivalent to right properness of model structure. Um, so here's how Frobenius relates to much of a type theory. Uh, in fact, it's uh, instrumental in interpretation of pi types uh, in simplicial and cubical models. Um, in uh, Vladimir Wobotsky's simplicial model of much of a type theory, where right maps are con vibrations, uh, Frobenius condition is justified, uh, uh, however, by, by a non constructive means um, using theory of minimal vibrations. Theory Cocant uh, rectified this uh, non constructive issue, um, where um, he gave a constructive proof of Frobenius condition um, in the cubical type theory. Um, where the, the most interesting innovation in this proof was the fact that he could reduce vibration structures, which are more, usually more complicated, to a more manageable composition structures. Um, so this, uh, this really, this innovation helped to give a very concise and short proof of Frobenius, whereas before we always either had like long non-constructive proofs. Uh, whether, whether in the setting of mod model categories or in the setting of, setting of uh, uh, Wobotsky's simplicial model of homotopy type theory. Um, however, uh, we, uh, until like quite recently, uh, maybe uh, four or five years ago, we didn't have a good uh, categorical proof of this. So we had a good type theory proof uh, by, by theory, but we didn't have uh, a conceptual uh, proof provided by category, theoretical means. And this was done by uh, two works. Uh, one is by Gambino Zettler, and the other one by Steve Audi's work on Cartesian cubical models, um, uh, where essentially in both works, the categorical pro proof is provided by chaining together a bunch of universal property, reasoning by universal properties. Um, um, we recently, with uh, Emily, gave a two categorical proof uh, where our proof is more equational um, um, rather than, than using universal properties, uh, essentially because we are using a theory of mates from two category theory uh, where, where you can reason equationally and like translate our, your, your reasoning by universal property in terms of like equality of certain pacing diagrams. Um, we also work in a more general setting of locally Cartesian closed categories. So we don't pick necessarily any specific model like a pre shift semantics, uh, but rather we work in generally locally Cartesian closed categories. Um, we also work with unbiased vibrations using a generic, uh, 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 sorry, a, an interval with a generic point. Uh, so we don't have like a bi pointed interval, nor do we have uh, any connection structures. So we do work with uh, generic intervals essentially. And um, so, so that's, the, that's what I'm going to talk about. We are, I'm going to talk about this two categorical construction, uh, proof of Rubinets. So this is our setup. Um, we have a locally Cartesian closed category E, uh, which has 
an object i in that uh, uh, in it essentially. Um, so this object i doesn't have any any property at all. It can be any object of the the category. Uh, we sort of think of it as an interval, um, so it can be any object. And moreover, we also have a category of uh, Trivial, trivial vibrations, and these are structured trivial vibrations, meaning that these are uh, 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 maps um, to uh, map maps or morphisms in, in E, uh, which they do come with additional structure of trivial vibrations. So that's additional piece of data. Uh, and therefore, we have a forgetful functor from this category of uh, trivial vibrations to category of morphisms or the other category of. Uh, furthermore, we, we assume like the, this uh, category um, of trivial vibrations satisfy three axioms, which I'm going to call STF1 for a structure trivial vibrations to STF3. And I'm going to explain this um, in a moment, what these axioms are. Um, but before that, I want to do two sort of ad hoc construction. Um, the first one is in, uh, we can construct this free retract diagram R so what it is, is basically uh, the generic retract diagram you can write. So it's constructed as a push out of three categories. Uh, here, two is the free walking arrow. One is the terminal category and three is the, the generic, the pair of composable arrows. And if you take the push out of these uh, categories, um, you get this uh, free retract category. Furthermore, if we exponentiate this free retract category, so in the bottom diagram, uh, top right corner, we have e to the r. And if we take the pullback of that along um, the inclusion of Cartesian squares, then we get this er cart uh, top left diagram of the pullback, which uh, defines it's sort of category of map, the category of maps with a specified section in them. Uh, and the arrows are essentially Cartesian, meaning that the squares are pullback squares. So bear this in mind, and now I'm going to explain um, the axioms on the category of trivial vibrations using this uh, retract diagrams and the category of specified sections. So, uh, so these are the three axioms. Um, so, uh, the the first axiom says essentially that the structured trivial vibrations have a stable choice of section. So, by stable, I mean here pullback is stable, um, and the section is provided by uh, the top right diagram, the dash arrow s. So, um, that arrow s is a functor which goes from the category of trivial vibrations to category of retract. Um, uh, the, the retracts in E. So that constructs um, for any trivial vibration a section, eight of a section. Um, the second axiom um, says that the trivial vibrations are stable under push forwards along any map. Um, so here, E4 cards in the second diagram, the bottom uh, functor is the push forward functor which uh, takes um, three composable maps and then takes push forward along the, the last map. And what this says, if you have three composable maps, wherein the first one is a trivial vibration and you take the push forward along the last one, the result is going to be a trivial vibration. So this actually implies two Push forward, push forward, push forward stability uh, conditions. The first one is the normal push forward stability, and the second one is functorial one, meaning that if you have um, uh, sort of an arrow in the slice category and that morphism itself is a trivial vibration, then the push forward of that morphism in the slice is going to be also a trivial vibration. So this is the strong, a stronger functorial. Uh, uh, stability under push forward. And finally, the third condition says uh, trivial vibrations are closed under retract. Um, so um, here, uh, if you have uh, 
so here we are talking about retract of morphisms. So uh, you should imagine uh, two squares uh, pasted together, and the middle map is essentially the retract of uh, yeah uh, the two side maps. So here uh, the category, the bottom left category, um, e to the exponents of r times the walking arrow, that specifies the re diagram of retract morphisms. And what it says, the condition is a dashed arrow evaluation at the retract exists. And what it says is that uh, yeah, that a structure trivial vibration, the retract of a structure trivial vibration is going to be a, a structure trivial vibration. Okay, so we are done with the axioms. Um, and um, from this category of trivial vibrations, we are going to define the category of vibrations. So given this uh, generic point of the interval, so delta, let's call it the generic point, um, we, uh, we can exponentiate this delta to any map P, and uh, this is the so-called Leib Leibniz exponential, which is given um, by this gap map to the pullback displayed here. So the pullback here is like you have a map P from A to X, it's any map of the uh, locally Cartesian closed category E, you take pullback of P along evaluation map, epsilon here, and once you form the pullback, then you get a gap map from um, the evaluation of A, essentially, the square involving evaluation of A. Um, and moreover, this gap map uh, gives rise to Cartesian functor from the arrow or the comma category of E to comma category of E. Um, so we have this Cartesian functor, and we put it in the in the display diagram at the bottom of the page. Hopefully that's visible to everybody. Um, so that because that's Cartesian, it's going to induce a functor from the comma category with Cartesian squares to itself, and we take the pullback of the forgetful functor u along this, and um, this gives rise to category of stably structured vibrations. So essentially a map based on this definition, a map is going to be a vibration or rather it has a vibration a structured data if and only if it's Leibniz exponential delta to P is going to be a trivial vibration. That, that, that is essentially the meaning of this pullback. Okay. Um, so what we are going to do, so the statement of Rubinius therefore becomes that uh, there is a lift of map pi from um, E3 card to E2 card. So if I have two composable vibrations and I take their push forward, push forward the first one along the second one, then the result should be a vibration. And this is essentially the functorial structured way of expressing what I just said. So to construct the map pi, uh, because pi lands in a, to a pullback uh, object. So remember, fifth card was defined as a pullback object. Um, we, it's, it's just enough to define pi prime, which goes to uh, the category of trivial vibrations and makes the outer rectangle commute. So that means I have, uh, yeah, the, the bottom, uh, uh, the composition of the bottom arrows is going to be the Leibniz exponential of push forward. Um, to obtain pi prime, we actually post compose with uh, one of the maps. So th this is the last map in uh, uh, axioms of stable uh, trivial vibrations, uh, which, so yeah, maybe it's it's good to quickly remind what it said. So this evaluation of R, which goes from this pullback T fib card to uh, cross E uh, two times R card to T fib card. So that was explained uh, as this axiom SF3. So that's this map that we are going to borrow from one of our axioms which yeah, basically said trivial vibrations are closed under retract. Um, 
So I'm going to, so in order to construct a map to this guy, it's enough to con construct a map that lands in this pullback. So that essentially means two things. We are going to construct a map to uh, this factor, which is going to be a trivial vibration. Um, so that's the red arrow that we are going to construct here. So basically the red arrow that uh, we have to construct says, if I give you a morphism in uh, E2, so that's a morphism in E, um, which is a vibration, how can we uh, provide a retract diagram? So a retract of that morphism. So uh, here's basically the construction of this red arrow. Um, so we start with two maps, uh, P and Q. So Q goes from B to A and P goes from A to X. So these are composable. And uh, we can then uh, consider the push forward P lower star Q. So by P lower star here, I mean the push forward of Q along P. And this makes sense because we are in the setting of locally Cartesian closed category. Then if we form the Leibniz exponential delta to P lower star Q, um, we prove that this is a retract of the push forward of Leibniz exponential of delta to Q. Um, so, and the push forward of delta to Q that we consider here is along the map uh, PI times I. So um, this retract diagram that uh, that you are seeing here, basically, um, which proves that delta to p lower star q is a retract diagram, exactly provides the data of this question mark red arrow. Because uh, we are starting with p and q in here, which are both vibration. I'm forgetting that uh, p is basic. I'm forgetting the second, uh, the first factor p is. Uh, is a vibration, so P is just a morphism, but I know that Q still is a vibration. And therefore, I want to uh, construct a retract diagram over delta two uh, Q. And this is exactly uh, proving that what I wanted is a retract diagram. So there, therefore, we have provided this red arrow that we wanted to construct. Um, so I haven't told you that this, so I just uh, ask you to assume that this is a retract diagram. And this is actually the main uh, difficulty of proving this uh, is, is the main part of the paper uh, that we wrote. And uh, this we use with calculus of mates. So hopefully I'm going to give a flavor of this. Um, but let me just finish the whole proof. Um, so, so by beck Chevalier, the vertical morphisms and the canonical transformations kappa E and kappa are stable under pullback. So kappa and kappa E are these maps, the comparison maps. Um, then uh, we also know that they are pullback, uh, row, and, row E and row are pullback stables because these maps are going to be constructed basically as sections of trivial vibrations. And we assume that sections are pullback stable in our axioms. Um, um, the second axiom shows that uh, this map, in fact, is a trivial vibration. In fact, it has a trivial vibration structure and it's pullback stable. And um, finally, as, as I explained before, uh, the third axiom uh, helped us to construct uh, this uh, dash map here to the pullback. Um, essentially, the difficult part was to construct a map to the second part. So to so to construct a retract diagram where the factor, the retract uh, morphism itself is a trivial vibration. Um, so the proof is complete, except that uh, the main retract diagram that I showed you, uh, uh, I, ha I have to prove that this is a retract diagram. Okay, so let's, uh, let's continue on uh, doing that. 
So here we are going to use mate. Uh, this is very short uh, overview of what mate correspondence is. Um, so if I start with a, a square a two cell alpha um, between functors um, F, H, L, and K, then if F and L have right adjoints, I can transpose with the units and co unit to get a two cell that goes from um, U composed with H to K composed with R. So essentially what happened to alpha is H and K remain the same, but I flip the direction of F and L using their right adjoints. And this process is uh, invertible, meaning that if I start with a diagram involving right adjoints, I can reduce it to a diagram involving left adjoints. Uh, so this is uh, this uh, phenomenon that I just described can be fully captured as a two categorical theorem. In fact, a bicategorical theorem by Kelly and Street. Uh, I'm going to skip this for the interest of time. Uh, um, so how are we going to apply this mate correspondence to our setup? Well, we have this interval object I, and because we are in the locally Cartesian setting, uh, it makes sense to write all this I upper star and I lower star, by which I mean there is a terminal map from the interval to the terminal object one in E. And that gives rise to three functors, the uh, direct image functor, the push pullback, and the push forward. So by I upper star, I mean to take the pullback along the unique map from I to the terminal object. Um, so therefore we get these two transformations, pi and nu for free. Pi is essentially projection, um, and new will see that it gives rise to evaluation. So um, if you actually write the components of these transformations along an object X, what you get pi is basically projection to the first coordinate and epsilon is evaluation of a path at an, uh, a point of interval. Um, moreover, this pi is Cartesian and this will be later useful to, to uh, as a useful fact for us. Um, so the main thing that we used in our uh, axioms even, and then later constructions was this Leibniz exponential. So the question is how to express this Leibniz exponential as V squaring of two cells. So it turns out that uh, Leibniz exponential is exactly V squaring of epsilon upper star with, uh, so epsilon was the evaluation and I take the, uh, it's inverse image essentially, and V squared that with the two cell new. And this exactly constructs the two cell, uh, the Leibniz exponential uh, at each component A. Um, so now I'm going to construct one of the maps that involved, that was involved in uh, uh, the, the retract diagram. So that was the map kappa uh, on the left-hand side. So um, we are starting the map P and we have uh, this naturality diagram of uh, evaluation. Uh, so then I, consider the uh, composition with, with P and PI times I, essentially. So these are the, uh, the left adjoints in the triple adjoints diagram. So this will be a commutative diagram of functors commuting. Um, and then I take the mates of this. So I take the left adjoints in the vertical direction. And this, so the identity two cell here gives rise to a non, so it's a directional two cell. It has a direction, it's not identity. And then furthermore, you take another uh, mate of this in the horizontal direction. And this is what you get, uh, what is known as the Beck Chevalet isomorphism square. And moreover, now again, I take uh, an, another mate in the vertical direction, and I take a non identity and non isomorphism two cell. And this I call kappa epsilon. Um, so here's the process. Um, Kappa epsilon uh, is displayed going from, um, uh, so that's on the uh, most right hand side. Hi, Sina. Sorry. And Can you wrap fact, up in about a minute or so? Because we're running out of time. I want to have time for a question. Please. Sure. Uh, thanks uh, for the reminder. So, uh, therefore, this Kappa epsilon is formally constructed. 
and it fits in the uh, bottom right uh, diagram. So this is copper epsilon, but evaluated at, at some uh, uh, map B over A. Um, similarly, we can construct the dash map copper over copper epsilon, essentially by pasting two isomorphisms that are made of identity eventually. Um, and this constructs copper. And now I'm going to, in the interest of time, to skip uh, the computation, why these things actually are the things we expect. And also we have to prove like certain diagram in the retract diagram commutes. So this turns out to be just equality of pacing diagrams and uh, involving some right adjoints. So the calculus of mating tells us that if you want to prove two pacing diagrams with right adjoints, you can prove the easier statement involving the left adjoint. So you take successive mates so that your pacing diagrams are trivial to prove. So that is what we do here, basically. I'm going to skip all of this. And um, essentially what we end up is uh, this retract diagram, uh, which are basically a bunch of maps constructed by mates. And proof of equality of proof of commutativity is also done by mating, by reducing every diagram involving right adjoints to diagrams or pacing diagrams involving left adjoints. So I'm going to end uh, and just mention the uh, some of the references. Um, so, um, and uh, uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Let's thank Sina. Uh, okay, we have time for one question. So, okay. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I, my understanding is that you started from tri tri uh, trivial vibration and then you defined the class of vibration uh, based on that. Uh, but often uh, the, the trivial vibration come themselves from a notion of vibration. So I was wondering whether you have a connection, a link uh, between the, the, the vibration defined from the trivial vibration and the, the, the vibration that you would have started with to define the tri trivial vibration. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, can I ask, because I can't see 